There's definitely some work that needs to be done. That's not a problem. I'm quite impressed with the work project that this boat is. This looks very, very usable. Oh, that's a long way down there. One of my favorite little things that they put on boats, I buy it in a New York minute. Let's go. Hi there, this is Captain Q. Join us as we travel hither and yon to show you some great deals on some really interesting boats and maybe learn just a little bit with each one. Captain? Oh, Randy! Hey! Hey, where are you? Hey, there you are, buddy! <laughs> Once again, we meet not on the high seas, but close to the high seas. Do you know where we are today? I think I know, but... Let me give you a little hint. How about <laughs> that right there? Mata Poisset, uh, and that's in uh, the state of Massachusetts down on, what's this water out here? Buzzards Bay. Buzzards Bay, right. Great access to Buzzards Bay at the Mattapoise Boat Yard. And it's a charming little boat yard, busy as can be. Uh, it's not the biggest one we've seen, but it is packed full and a lot of nice people work down here. We have not seen yet uh, one of the early manufacturers of production fiberglass boats and one of the most popular, and that is a company called C&C. C&C stands for Cuthbertson and Cashin. They are two gentlemen uh, whose first names are both George. One night during a Maple Leafs game, uh, a gentleman named Perry Connolly, he told uh, the Georges, he said, I want you guys to build me a 40 foot mean, mean, mean sailing machine. And uh, they said, okay, we'll do it. And it was the first time uh, they, wanted to, they wanted to save weight, make it ultra fast. Sort of the first use of balsa coring in the hull, sandwiching balsa core between two layers of fiberglass, cutting out all the extra buildup of resin and glass that had historically been used to date, which made for very heavy, heavy boats. Red Jacket was the name of the boat. Red Jacket came out, and we remember seeing her thinking, oh my God, this is amazing. She had a little kind of nubbin of a bowsprit on her. You'd like that, Randy. It wasn't yeah. very big, but just a little bit of a nubbin. And all of a sudden, you see this giant gentleman go up. It was the biggest thing we had ever seen on our little 25 and 30 footer that we were sailing on. And then the gun would go off, and they'd strap that Jenny in, be like a, just like it had been starched and ironed onto the side of the boat. She'd heel over, and she would just take off, just take off like a shot. And here was this 40-footer going like crazy. And <clears throat> next thing you know, she was, you know, over the horizon. Uh, that boat went down that, that first winter and uh, beat something like 85 boats for, uh, to, to place high in the SORC, the Southern Ocean Racing Circuit. And then the following year, she went down and won the whole circuit. Wow. Anyway, very shortly thereafter, about 1974, they came out with the 40-foot class right here. Oh, this is it right here. And this is her right here. This is what we're here to see today. Here's a 40-foot C&C boat, C&C design, and uh, th they came out with a deep keel on her originally. This is the uh, centerboard version, and she draws about four foot eight, and with the centerboard down, it draws uh, just shy of nine feet. So she's going to get uh, uh, she's going to get some good windward ability when that board goes down. Very distinctly a uh, CNC boat. And the way you can spot it right away is the little sort of starburst, I'll call it, at the end of the cove stripe there. And there's a slightly elongated one up at the bow. It almost looks like an Excalibur sword, if you will. Boats have always had their names on the transom, right? Yep. CNC, the uh, red jacket came out and they split the cove stripe right about midships and they put the name in small letters, maybe, oh, three inch letters or so, right in the center, right in the, about the beam of the boat. And it was kind of cool, because you could see, you know, you could tell what the boat was, and it was distinctive. And when you saw a red jacket, you just, your blood, you know, froze. We're looking at a, a, a balsa cord hull. Uh, yeah, does that, does that bother you, or does that worry you at all? No, no, not at all. There could be a soft spot here somewhere. She may have had a ding somewhere and there may be some slight moisture intrusion. Um, your survey is going to tell you ex actually where. I've spoken with the broker and they have had a survey on this boat already and the people didn't want to buy it because they found moisture up on the deck near the bow. I said, how bad was it? He said, it, 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 nothing. The deck didn't move, nothing happened, but a moisture meter up against the deck said, oh, you've got point something or other moisture, and they said, oh, I don't want the boat. We've got some fairly slack bilges here that come down to a, a reasonably flat run on her bottom, not, not the full wine glass version, 
but it's, you've got to have some fullness in the hull, but she's not totally flat. She's nice and deep forward. See how deep she is forward there? So she's going to settle right down into the waves and give you a nice soft ride wherever you're going. The rudder is about as far aft as you can get it without putting it on the next boat behind you. <laughs> I'm not seeing any real issues here of any sort with this particular boat. Uh, it's just a single, basically spade rudder, uh, partially balanced, partially balanced. Uh, the hull is undistorted though uh, for the IOI, so she's not really radical. She tapers back here uh, to a nice reverse transom on it. Nothing's going to stop the water going by this boat. We see our friendly old Max prop. This does look like the gel coat, the original gel coat, but maybe it is. <laughs> maybe it is. There'd be no problem dropping this boat in the water today and go sailing. Uh, hopefully we can get her cleaned up on deck before we do. Let's take a look. You ready to go? Top size? Top size, yeah, let's do it. Okay, I'll leave my pointer down here. Uh, and... Okay, Randy, uh, once again, you've made it up here. Yeah. Uh, and I'm once again seated in the king's throne. <laughs> A familiar place. A familiar place. The heritage on this boat was racing. CNC went to great, great lengths to make it not only a good racer, but also to allow you some creature comforts to go cruising. So when the race is over, off you go. How much elbow grease do you want to afford to put into this boat? That's part of the question here. CNC was innovative uh, about a lot of things. The, uh, this, this hump I'm sitting on right now for the helmsman gives you the height to see over the cabin when you're powering along. And I've got two deep seats on either side. I'm really in this and the boat can be healing over 15, 25 degrees. I'm comfortable with a bug and a rug. They spent some time thinking about the propane tanks on the boat. So here are two lockers, one port and one starboard, uh, to carry the propane tanks on the boat, all nicely isolated, all vented overboard, uh, and ready to uh, uh, provide you with all the heat you need and the cooking fuel you need. There's also a large hatch for uh, engine repair work, major, major engine repair if you need to get to that. I like the recess on the cleats here, you see that? That's a nice little touch on both those cleats because many times you'll end up sitting right on top of that uh, seat combing there. It's a nice broad seat for you and you won't have to sit on a cleat. Um, they've thought about the crew here. We have a, a hydraulic backstay adjuster here and this works on its own arm, I believe. This is a, uh, yeah, this is self-contained, which means that you'll put a, a rod in here and you'll just pump this up or, or down, depending on where you want the tension on the back stay and the, and the, and the head stay. But that, that's a lever that'll go in there and you'll, you'll pump it up and down. I can step right around this wheel, as big as it is, I can come right around it. There's lots of room for me. And I'm gonna just step forward into the crew part of the cockpit. We have a little bridge deck, a low one, but adequate uh, to keep big waves from uh, pooping in and out. The rudder post coming up through the hull where you would attach an emergency rudder down there. Do you see that down there? Yep. An emergency rudder is yeah. required on, on all race boats. Nice big deep locker for your bumpers and your batteries, battery access. Everything we're looking at needs soap and water. Think soap and water to start with. Another one of these little lockers. Where did we see that before? I don't remember which boat it was. How about the Shannon? Oh yeah. That is, I think, a place to put some cold drinks. You could put lines and some other things in there, but it's got little scuppers here, little drains. Um, it's a drain out of any ice water. I would put ice in there and, and uh, your sodas and iced tea and so forth. Maybe even a sandwich or two, just to keep it cool up on deck. And remember one reason why that's so shallow. We got a little quarter berth. We got a quarter berth, right. And here's a little port light for the person in the quarter berth to look out and say, what the heck are you doing up there? Slow this boat down, I can't sleep. Here's the, uh, your apparent wind over here. And on this side, we're going to have a fathometer on top, tell you how deep it is. And this will tell you how fast you're going uh, through the water. Those look pretty new. Uh, they look fairly fresh, exactly, yeah. This is the uh, centerboard winch right here. And it collects the wire. And here you notice they've got a little white piece of tape on there. That just tells you, oops, stop cranking. Because yep. the board's all the way up. Nice traveler, nice Harkin traveler right in front of us with mid-boom sheeting, which allows you to keep the uh, main sheet 
out of the cockpit and not knocking you over every time you come about. This set of shrouds, and we're actually on a boat with a mast up again. We haven't seen too many of those. Nope. She's got all internal halyards, and directly under your knee, there's lots of little things to see up here. See, we got a little pile of dirty water and leaves here, but right under your knee is a cover for the Charlie Noble for the propane or diesel fireplace, fireplace that we're gonna find down in the oh. main saloon. Uh, the deck has got a nice grid to it. I don't see any signs of crazing of any sorts to speak of, nothing major. Suspicious spot over here. What's that? Oh, looks like something's hit that probably, and that would be something to look at. Uh, there's a place for a staysail shroud right there. Yep. And uh, there's another track there. Uh, we just have to find out what the tracks were set up for. How would you find that out? Would you just talk to the owner? Oh, we talked to the owner, but you just uh, find out what's on the boat and get it out to sea and see what sails are on board. Uh, this is not complicated information. And it's just knowing how she was originally set up. Well, you're looking really smart with those knee pads. I am so happy to have my knee pads. I'd be bleeding right now. I'd be dying. <laughs> uh, I really would be. A very large whoop, anchor storage with a fortress anchor in there. Can you see that? Oh. Which is kind of a, a, a spin-off of a Danforth. Of course, right here you see this this uh, uh, perforated aluminum rail, right? Yeah. This is another CNC innovation, and it caught on. But everybody thought, "Gee, that looks kind of goofy. Where's the good old teak going down there?" Right? Hard to say what's going on here. There's been some wastage uh, on this one bow cleat, and uh, this oh. is this is a replacement here. Um, so we've got age on the boat. There's, there's some of the. Uh, 46 years are, starting, are showing a little bit, right? What would cause that kind of corrosion? Uh, salt water, that's all, just yep. over time. Nice hark and roller furler. Looks pretty fresh. Yeah, this, this looks very, very usable. It's been reported that there is some wetness up in this foredeck somewhere, okay? Now, is that good? Would I not buy this boat for $15,000? I'd buy it in a New York minute. That's not a problem. We just had a discussion between the broker and myself, and he's been around for a number of years himself. And I said, you know, I've never really heard of a ship being lost at sea because suddenly their balsa got wet, or somebody falling through the deck because their balsa decks got moist. There's still, a, there's still two shells of fiberglass and the balsa's in between that. And he agreed with me hardly. Now, we have a lot of people watching us, which we're really happy to have, and we get a lot of information from them from time to time. And there may be somebody out there who knows that a failed balsa core caused the demise of a sailboat. I'd love to know about it, uh, but for the most part, I have to say, I just don't know about it. Yep. So anyway, nice working foredeck. Uh, we're on a real racing uh, CNC yacht here. Um, and as you see below, she's going to be comfortable below. Yeah, maybe we should take a look. That's a great idea. Okay, Randy, come on down. Oh, all right. Uh, nice little tour around the foredeck. First of all, this boat is very reasonably priced, and there's always a reason for something. You got nothing for nothing for nothing. But uh, when you come below here, uh, the first thing you notice is that there's a there's a damp smell to the boat. She's had water inside here uh, through various openings. I don't believe she's ever sunk. I think she's just been wet and the deck's gotten wet. And there may be deck leaks through the tracks, through some other things. This is a boat waiting to have attention. And we've had people write to us and say, hey, why don't you show something that needs some work or something? Well, we're showing you something that needs some work. We found it. <laughs> but when you get that, when you get this boat though, you get a boat with an amazing heritage. I'd love to turn that on right now. This boat would be that would, dried out. That would be nice. In nanoseconds, it would be just so great. Um, she's got a nice little sail inventory. There's a mainsail, 140% Genoa, a storm jib. There is a spinnaker, and I think there's a staysail as well. Uh, there's hot water and refrigeration. I'm sitting in a very deep um, L-shaped settee here, and uh, uh, I can imagine with the cushions in it, how deep those cushions are going to be. With a nice seat back, here's some Velcro to hold the cushions up, and they'll do two things. They'll hold the cushions up, and they'll also allow you, they're probably going to be separate cushions, and you can open up each cushion and get access to the little storage locker behind it. Above it is a, uh, a pilot berth, and 
it's just a nice size, not too skinny, not too fat, just right for that offshore watch uh, to be comfortable. There's another one like just like it on the other side, uh, on the starboard side, again with storage underneath it. So you've got all your four off-watch crew members here. For say a long distance race, you might have eight on board, four up tending uh, all the sails, and four down here snoozing away. There's a nice uh, galley table here. It looks very familiar to something we've seen on the Alden, for that matter. It's just it's just nicely, nicely done, nice size, and there's little storage lockers underneath. We're finding bits and pieces of, of dampness here and there. Uh, and I think some of the hatches have been left open. There's definitely some work that needs to be done uh, to get this boat completely straight again. How would you compare this to the Cal 40 that we looked at? Because that was about the same price, right? Yeah, the Cal 40 was uh, actually just a little bit less. It was at kind of $12,345, I think yeah. he wanted for it, something like that, uh, which was an, ast an astonishing, astonishing price. That was a lot of boat for $12,000 and a, a, an amazing boat with an amazing history. This boat, CNC like to have cruising accommodation. If you look around here and you kind of squint a little bit, you see nice uh, dark stained, sort of walnut stained uh, uh, wood inside here. I don't know if that was teak originally stained dark or not, but and it's a little dark, but but still it's handsome. Uh, the galley uh, is is all the same sort of uh, look to it. And with this rig. They've done a really nice job to make it comfortable cruising. This doesn't have as much headroom as we've seen in other boats. Uh, I'm 6'1". I've got clearance in here, uh, but anybody over 6'1 with high heels or anything, they're going to have a little problem with the height in the boat. Nice galley, uh, small, U-shaped, uh, working, working spaces on top of the, of the uh, uh, freezer ice box. There's drawer storage back in here. Uh, in the cabinets, you've got places for food and so forth. Oh my God, we got another real sailor here. This was obviously a real racing boat. You don't go racing without Denny Moore on board, do you? Do you? You don't, no. Don't. no. Come on, speak up. You love Denny Moore. Uh, you do. I eat it. You love Denny Moore. Anyway. It's more of a like. <laughs> you love Denny Moore. You scour <laughs> that plate every time I hand it up through the hatch. That's true. Uh, and in the galley, uh, we have a refrigeration unit here with a holding uh, plate, looks like system, and I'd want to check out and see how good that is. But I, I think it's probably good enough to, uh, oh, oh, keep your liquid refreshment. Now we're talking. Just right. Now this looks like something we've seen on other boats, uh, but it worked really well on the PB, didn't it? It sure did. Drank a lot of this. It was inexpensive, and uh, what was the other thing we liked about it? Uh, no hangover. No hangover, right, exactly. So we should take that with us. Maybe we'll take that with us tonight. <laughs> I'm going to take that with us. It's a little prize for us for being so good here today. Anyway, this is really big. Take a look down in there, would you? Sure. And uh, let me. Oh, open. wow, it's really wide. Yeah, it's very wide. That's a big storage area for food and really well insulated. We've got a three burner propane stove, nice big one, and of course, the ubiquitous pot and pan storage. A couple of doozies. Couple. <laughs> These are doozy one and doozy two. <laughs> nice and deep and uh, pretty close to the center line too, so uh, they're not going to spill readily. One of my favorite little things that they put on boats, garbage bin. It doesn't seem like much, but it's so handy. And there is a derayed uh, opening vent here and one on the other side, so anybody sitting down here working, they gave a little fresh air to the navigator and a little fresh air to the cook. And inside here, everything you never have any other place to put goes into the chart table. You got your Eldridge Tide book too. Uh, Eldridge Tide book, exactly. The variant winch handles, uh, bilge pump handles. I'm seeing dampness in the overhead here underneath the uh, uh, Genoa track, uh, but it's all encased in, in plastic. This is all fiberglass right here. So I don't know why they decided to do this, maybe try to track down uh, these, they may have rebed this whole track too. Yep. And the only way you could get to these bolts, these bolts were going to be under the over under the uh, overhead. Uh, so they had to tear it out, put the track in, refasten it, and and uh, rebed it. There's no radar on the boat, uh, which is sad. And I, I haven't seen uh, an autopilot. And those are two pretty things things pretty dear to my heart. How about this uh, quarter berth here? You know how we like quarter berths, right? <laughs> some you love, some you don't. Well. This is going to be okay. This is uh, a little unusual uh, because, first of all, uh, living underneath here is the hot water tank, and that's a big one, hot water tank. 
and you see there's some wood wastage back there. There's been a lot of dampness in this boat. We just have to figure out how extensive it is and what needs to be done and why it's been so damp. But here is a bunk board. So you can put one crew member on that side and another crew member on this side. So with going to the concept of, of a race boat, they wanted to get their weight aft as much as possible, sleeping side by side, or you could have storage, however you want to do it for the navigator, could live right here. Now I'm going to show you the engine room, and um, it has a little uh, surface uh, corrosion and so forth, but I'm told that the engine ran nicely when they put her away. The Yanmar uh, 40 horse, and it's not that old. Uh, it's like, uh, oh, I'm going to say like 2001 or so. Uh, but anyway, uh, there's a big access plate, as we said, in the cockpit if you want to do some serious work. And there's a little locker on the side uh, from the quarter berth probably to get to the oil uh, dipstick. Yeah, what does that make you think when you see the engine like that? Any concerns? I mean, no, no, not necessarily. And I'm sad for this boat right now, frankly, because it needs heat in here. And if I owned this boat right now, I'd, I'd put heaters in here and I'd dry the heck out of this boat. If I bought this boat, we'd have it surveyed like crazy. I'd want to know where every little issue is. I'd want to know the history from the owner as to what he's done. Uh, you know, it depends on how far you want to go. If, if all you can afford is the price of the boat and some soap and water, uh, then there's only so much you can do with the boat. But if you've got a little extra change, then you just pick what's necessary to do. What's going to be, what are you going to have to do to the boat to be safe to go sailing? I would, I would flush this boat like crazy with hoses, yep. just sitting at the dock and just see, oop, what's coming in? Where's it leaking? The uh, flooring is all teak and holly. It's uh, well used. It's left from a lot, of, uh, a lot of days at sea, I think. And uh, all these could be pulled up, sanded down, and uh, brightened up and would look terrific. Just look at the uh, uh, chain plates as they come down into the boat. Uh, these are pretty massive. Look at the size of this thing and look how it's bolted in there. And that comes down right through the deck with this giant plate and uh, there's been some leakage at that point. You can see that. We're not going to fool around with that. Yep. Uh, we like to find uh, hand holes inside. These are really good ones and they run the whole length of the cabin on both sides. And you got a little shelf drip hand hold as well, both places. So you're, you're pretty well locked in. I uh, just want to look here inside the hanging lock. You get a sense of the tabbing from the hull to the solid bulkhead and how, how good that looks down here and, and, and on the after bulkhead as well. Um, it's just a nice sign. Nothing's, the, the tabs aren't coming up hard or drying out. Here we have another one of our old favorites, the twofer. We have a sink and that wedge in the corner. Nice way it hasn't taken up a big space. And you have a handheld shower. Uh, and uh, hot and cold water, a little soap dispenser, and a foot pump. Again, foot pumps are nice to have on boats so that you don't turn on the water and forget it like you do at home. Do you know oh. what this is? Yes, I do. That's really clever. Yeah, so you got a place to keep the toilet paper dry while you're showering. How do you like the room in there? The room is amazing. You could actually join me if you want to, but... <laughs> I'm going to pass on that <laughs> for you, now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But nice head. I'm you... going to disappear now. All right. This little disappearing act. Yeah, come on in, come on in. It's real swell in here. You'll like this. And here's something that's very clever, and I wish more people would do this. You see what this is right up here? Is that the uh, wedge board? That's, that's the filler for, the, for the, the queen size bunk here. And they've just set it up in a, in a set of fiddles up there on the overhead, and it's locked in place, so it's not bouncing around in here. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> not bad, huh? Not bad. Not bad at all. She had a really nice layout. Uh, all the CNCs were... Uh, coming out of the uh, Red Jacket brand, if you will, we're really set up for racing. This boat has a, appears to have a very solid hull. It looks really good. The deck has been reported to have a little bit of moisture in it somewhere. It felt solid. It looks solid. Uh, but inside, there's been water seepage. Can't wait to get some heat inside that boat. I really <laughs> want to turn on heaters everywhere and just suck all the moisture out of that place and make it a real boat again. Then you start doing some of the repair work. But she's going to need work, and I don't know how much or to what extent. And that's going to be up to the buyer. It's a really uh, inexpensive way to get into sailing in a, in a larger boat. But I think you can get a lot of fun and a lot of time on this boat uh, just the way she is. Would you call this a handy person special? 
Yes, I would call this a handy person special. <laughs> I think that's a, a, a very apt name for it. But a cool one, when you're finished with it, it's gonna be so cool and fast. You know, all these boats that we look at, at any given time in my life, from the age of 20 up to 112 that I'm fast approaching, uh, I would be happy to take on as a project and then throw some money in and go sailing, go racing with it. I miss racing. I think the boat deserves a, a reasonably interesting rate. That boat will float, no question about it. So we're gonna give her 10 to start with, but I'm gonna give her a couple of points uh, for her sea and sea-dum history. Uh, I'm gonna give her another point for shoal draft, and then uh, I'm only gonna give it half a point more. I'm gonna go to 13 and a half on this because you're gonna to have to put another seven, six and a half points in it yourself to bring it up to where it could be and should be and, and could be a lot of fun. But as we always say, bring your surveyor, make an offer, bring your surveyor. You're not going to find a brand new boat at this price. You're gonna find a boat that's pretty cool. It's gonna give you a lot of years of fun. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. We're having too good a time doing these things, so uh, you can hit the bell or not. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now, and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>